You are watching Sammy, the interviewing toucan, made possible by the Indiana Young Reader Center. Hey, everybody. I'm Sammy, and I'm here today with Roseanne Tolan. Hi, Roseanne. Hi, Sammy. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing today? Good. I'm doing great. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, we are here today to talk about you and your book, More Than Marmalade, Michael Bond and the Story of Paddington Bear. And I can't wait to get into the book. But before we do that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection to Indiana? I would love to. Well, I live in Chesterton, Indiana, but I actually grew up I was raised in St. Louis, Missouri. And um, when I was a really young child, my favorite thing to do was to read lots of books in the corner and have a box of crayons and draw pictures from things that I thought about in those books. And then when I got to high school um, in St. Louis, I worked for a creative writing magazine. I went to law school eventually in Chicago, which is how I ended up in Chesterton. And um, it's also in Chesterton where I eventually got a job as a managing editor for a um, literary magazine for kids. And that's when I really decided I wanted to write for children. Oh, wow. I just love that. That's so great. So up in Chesterton, are you near Lake Michigan? We're very close to Lake Michigan. I'm about five minutes from the lake, which is <sighs> awesome. And so I'm really close to the Indiana Dunes. Well, now it's a national park. So we have lots and lots of visitors from all over the country that come here. So maybe the world. Um, it's, it's a great place to live and hike with my dogs and spend time in nature and get ideas from my books. Oh, I love it. I think that's such an interesting place in Indiana. That's the thing I love about Indiana. You have places like the dunes and then down in the south you have um, the Hoosier National Forest, plus of course all of our agriculture and things. So there's just a yep. whole variety everywhere in the state. It's so great. So Roseanne, can you tell us a little bit more about your work? I know we have this book. Do you have other books that you've written or is this your first mm -hmm. one? This is my debut, uh, is a nonfiction, a narrative nonfiction book. It is my book debut, but I've had lots and lots of articles published um, in, particularly in newspapers, because I used to be a newspaper reporter here in Northwest Indiana. I worked for the Time newspaper as a features writer. And um, so I've published hundreds of articles and also articles in magazines, um, some for adults, some for kids. I've done a lot of freelance writing. I created my own website. So I've been doing lots of writing and some publishing, but this is my first. I love it. That's so great. Um, can you tell us a little bit about where you are in your creative journey and where do you hope to be someday? I always love this question because um, for folks like you, I mean, you seem pretty well established, but then again, you know, maybe you have other goals that you want to achieve in your life. Well, I think, um, you know, for a lot of people, it might be a goal to publish a book, especially to traditionally publish a book. But now that I have, I just um, want that journey to keep going and going for as long as possible. Um, it's really, really a labor of love more than anything else. It's a passion of mine. And I would say that um, basically right now on my journey, I continuously keep writing. I do have a novel, a historical novel out on submission with a lot of publishers. Um, but in the meantime, I just keep on writing picture books and middle grade and other nonfiction projects. So I just keep it going and I try to learn as much as possible. Oh, I love that. That's so exciting that you have a book out on submission. I wish you lots of, lots of joy and lots of, I, I hate to use Thank the you. word luck. I feel like that would mess it up, but I, I, I hope it's successful. I hope it's successful. Thank you. Thank you. So Roseanne, you know, it's a, it's a historic time that we're living through right now. Can you tell us a little bit, how are you doing coping with the health crisis? Do you have any advice for other folks? Well, I've really used it. First of all, I've had more family time than I have in a long time. So in that way, it was really, really good. I have college age kids who are all home. Um, so we really had some bonding time this summer, which was really great. Uh, they, they're back to school now, but um, that was a really nice aspect of things on a positive note. And the other really positive thing was that I think other folks can do too is, uh, as far as my writing, 
and my own career, it really gave me a chance to join in a lot of virtual workshops and virtual opportunities for learning. So I was able to really hone my craft even more and really um, attend some things and learn some things that I otherwise would not have. So I think from that standpoint, you know, it, it had me slowing down a little bit in that way to really um, pay attention to some details that I might not have otherwise. I think that's such a great observation um, because, you know, I feel like when you're in a tough spot, like all of us are, it's important to remember that we can still learn about things, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, learning is so great mm -hmm. because it keeps your brain flexible and ready to learn more things. Right, I love that. I'm. My kids know how I am about things like um, research and Google, and that's what I really love about nonfiction writing, too, is all the research involved. So if I don't know something, if I come across something and it strikes my curiosity or piques my curiosity, I always dive in and want to find out more and more. So I'm definitely one of those people who, for, lear you know, for me, learning is such a great joy. You know, I get excited about finding out about new things. Well, let's talk about your book for a minute. Um, I did read it. It's called More Than Marmalade, and it's all about Paddington. It's such a sweet yeah. story. It's mostly about Michael Bond, who was the author of Paddington. And I have to say, like, the research that you did really made the book come alive for me. I loved some of the details, like, um, you put in the detail that when the Paddington Bear story was first sold, he sold his first book for 75 pounds. And, you know, that might not say, sound like a lot, but it was the equivalent of like $2,300 back then. And that was a lot of money, right? That would be a lot of money back then. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So he must have been very excited about that. I'm sure. I'm sure. But I'm glad that you enjoyed it. I did. And I also loved all the details about World War um, II. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, well, Michael Bond never really intended to fly airplanes and be a pilot. He tried that. He got very, very air sick. And since that, he wasn't cut out to do that. He ended up in the army on the ground. And that's when he began writing. And he first sold something, I believe, to the London Opinion at that time when he was uh, in the desert in the army. And he got so excited that he actually got paid for that. So when um, he got out and he began working, he left school at the age of 14, which of course is very young. School really wasn't his thing. He was a very average student, as exceptional of a person as he was. It just was not his thing. So he ended up getting a job at the BBC, um, and which is of course a British news network that is still going strong today. And they had lots and lots of television programs. And he ended up behind the camera. And uh, he was a cameraman for the BBC for many years, even when he started writing the Paddington books. Until they became very successful, he still worked as a cameraman. So I feel like for him, that really sparked his creativity even more to sort of watch things go by in front of his lens. And um, I think that really helped uh, add some fodder for his future books. Oh, I love that. So Roseanne, I'm asking all of my authors to share a little something. Do you have a little something there you want to share with us? I do. I do. I have. I brought my Paddington there with me. Um, oh. Yes, and this is an older guy. And he's so special to me because when I had my book published, um, actually for my last birthday, my daughter, Josie, who uh, is a college graduate of, as of just a couple of years ago, she's 23 years old now, she gave this Paddington to me. And it, it's really, really special to me. It's my first real Paddington. Oh, he's so sweet. And you know, the thing that I love about Paddington, um, his stories kind of remind me a little bit of um, Amelia Bedelia a little bit. He kind of tends to get in a lot of scrapes, right? <laughs> Yes, yes, but he's so innocent and so good-hearted, so he's just super lovable and, and wise in his own way, I guess a little bit like Winnie the Pooh too, but they're very different, but right. uh, they're both sort of wise in their own maybe naive way. 
So, but that's okay. That's really sweet. Mm -hmm. I think we all need a little bit more Paddington in our life, actually. I think so too. And I'm looking forward to the third movie coming out. Have you ever seen the movies, Sammy? You know, I they're on my list. They're on my list. They're excellent. They're really oh, excellent. good. That's great. Well, Roseanne, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for sharing your book and your bear with us. We really appreciate the interview. And this is your favorite Hoosier Toucan, encouraging you to read local. So long, Thank Roseanne. You, Sammy. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.